Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Okami HD episode 22. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. Today we're going to be taking a look at that cursed-ass sunken ship right over there. But to do so, we need to get on top of that platform right on top of that. But before that, we have to take care of this clover. Very nice. I think I should alleviate some praise before we get started. Uh, let's see. Another ink pot, and we'll fill up the coin purse. And now we don't have any praise. That's 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 good. Well, anyway, just double jump to make it on top of this, and there we go. Crescent moon, huh? Maybe I need a sun. Sun solves everything! Okay, okay fine, how about uh, just a crescent? And then we have sun and moon in the same sky! To over <laughs> overshadow the sun and bring darkness to everyone. A little dark. And somehow that aligns, I guess it just depends on which way you look. I guess it's not really all that picky. So moonlight drains the water from this lagoon. There is a time limit too. If it turns sunlight, or if you wait too long, and uh, day comes, the water fills back up. So that's a little careful. But before we head into the sunken ship, there's a few things we got to do first. There's a couple of chests out here that need our attention, and by that I mean clams. This one holds an exorcism slip. The other one's over here. All right. We gotta position her just right, and... Glass beads is the other one. Now we can head on up here. But don't head inside just yet. Because we actually need to make it on top of the ship first. Double jump in a dash, which should be able to get you up there just fine. Yep, we're gonna head up this plank of wood here. Jump over that. We got two treasure chests. Very nice. One on the, le on the uh, right here is a golden peach. But most importantly, the one over here is Stray Beat 41. Very nice. I just want to show off one more quick thing before we make it in. If you take too long exploring, or if sun actually does come up while you're in the Sagoon, it fills back up with water. Leaving you exactly where you are, and stranded in the water, and you have to go all the way back up there if you want to try again. Or you could just go ahead and drown, like I'm gonna do here. And the game takes you right back on top of the moon turret, where you can just make another crescent moon and do the whole thing over again. So I'll go ahead and see you right when we get back to the second ship. And 45 seconds later, here we are, heading inside of the sunken ship to see what kind of mysteries and ghosts and treasures are inside. How exciting. Huh? 
Oh hey, it's Rao! Hammy? Hammy? I mean, what are you staring at? And why are you staring? Yeah, okay. This is pretty easy. Rao will help us throughout this dungeon. If you want to use your prayer slips, just go into brush mode. Put your brush here, and you just run all the way over to wherever you want to put it, and we want to put it right here on this door. And it'll go and fly in whatever path you make it fly in, until it finally hits its mark. Could not be any more simple. Great treasure awaits indeed. There's tons of treasure and tons of ghosts on this ship. Ghosts are immune to your brush powers and the only thing you can do is throw your prayer slips at them in the hopes that it will exterminate them. And they drop demon fangs, which is also nice. One right in my way so I couldn't see it. So then, there's three. This dungeon can be confusing if you don't know what you're doing, so we're just gonna blaze right through it, like normal. So you gotta think, what's the catch? All these chests here, I mean... Yeah, they have a lot of good stuff. I mean, you got a holy bone. Over there. You got... Ah! A ghost chest I forgot about. Whenever you see a ghost chest, just throw a, per a prayer slip at them and they'll blow up. And they do blow up. So keep that in mind. There's another travel guy, by the way. And they do hurt, so be a little careful. By what you open up. Don't worry, there's only like a few though, and uh, they're kind of easy to tell, these ones at least. If they drop yen, get back, because it's always a trap when the treasure chest drops yen. So, with that taken care of, let's find out what all that laughing is about. Oh, it must be that thing. Oh, that's, that's nice, I guess. Okay, excuse me, you're kind of in my way. Excuse me, trying to get through all these things here. Okay. Well, now we meet our first actual enemy of the dungeon. Did 
Jiro and Saburu. I hate this fight and this fight alone because these guys have an impenetrable shell that does not break. And this is the only time I'll have to pretty much only fight them like this because they always transform into a different enemy in any other time that you meet them. An enemy we'll be fighting a little bit later on in this dungeon. Right now we're just gonna take care of uh, these fleshy guys real quick. Once you take care of the shell on them, you can start power slashing away at them. And uh, deflecting back some of those bullets can help too, but there's too much of them to really kind uh, <laughs> throw back all at once. They're very difficult when they're apart like this. Very, very difficult sometimes. There's my blade to cut him down. And uh, they do not have the floor finisher that I need. I need Thunderbolt. We don't get that until way incredibly, oh my god, later into the game. So with that taken care of, head into this room over here. One well, that doesn't have spikes if you get lost. The Golden Gate we need to save, which we don't. Another curse door, once I learn how to aim and use the brush properly. Boom. And we're into a room that has given me many confusion for many hours, for many years. Well, before I talk about this room, let's go ahead and get this clover over here. Yep. The thing about uh, this room over here is that we need to get up there to get over here. And then the only way to get up there is through over there. But this seems like a nice place to put the sun, because that just seems like a place that you would do that in. Because of doing so, that causes the water to rise. We need to make sure that we can get over there when the water is up. But it's kind of hard for us to do it right now, but it's... it's... It's all very confusing, and it, like, it... Part of the problem of this... not problem, but part of the challenge of this dungeon is trying to make heads or tails. But you want to head back first. Shit, I almost made it. The idea is to head back first, the way you came. So you can face another enemy. Jiro and Saburo fuse to make Ichiro a shark demon. This is probably the most difficult encounter with Ichiro you will have, because we're in water, which is kind of like his natural native habitat. If you have the glaive, it's very easy to hit him, but it's kind of hard to do so right now because he has that. I think he has also has an outer shell, just like Ichiro and Saburo. Or Jiro and Saburo. I get them all confused. Jeez. If you stay on the barrels, sometimes using lily pads if you want to have a little bit of extra room to maneuver around in, which I'll do right here. That was Gale Storm I did. <laughs> lily pad moves away though, so you can't stay in one spot. I've broken his shell, now he's exposed. Again, very good to use the glaive. You can charge up the glaive as well, so you can just give him a super powerful attack right there. That, that took a lot. And then finish off with that. He also needs the Thunder Shock for his floor finisher, which we don't have. Yeah, screw you for time. But, that takes care of that. Going back even further. I'm pretty sure these things still jet out at you, despite the water. Yep, they do. And now we're back at this main room. Notice that these two trap chests are still active. But nothing happens, except more yen that I can't see and I can't get. So, no point in that. And now we can make it over this wall here. And there's a cannon. 
I bet you have no idea what to do here. Well, as it stands, we can really only use the cannon for those top two doors, but we'll worry about that later. Because we'll be coming back here. Right now, I'm going to take care of that ghost. Get that demon fang. Mine, mine, mine. And... Three more for you. That's water spout. Brush is a little bit imprecise sometimes. But that's okay. Oh, come on! Hit him! There. Boy, Rao, your aim sucks. Alright, making through here, uh, we'll just, uh... That's a hand. A hand that almost killed us. I wonder what that's all about. It's actually about that guy right there. He likes to hurt us a lot. The only name he goes by is Greater Demon. I don't know what he is. He's a CB monster, but he's Greater Demon. And that is the weight we need. That's kind of clipping through the rope there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down ahead of time. While he's trying to smash us down, we make our way to this barrel. Oh, come on! Shit. I think it might be okay, though. We'll fall off. There we go. I thought I was going to have to go back and backtrack. If you roll this barrel all the way over here to the end of, the, of uh, our little weight pulley scale system we have here, I guess. There. So now these two barrels are directly in, uh, affected by the water level. And we get a monkey statue out of the ordeal too. And now he's gonna go ahead and sleep there, I guess. That's fine. My way back up here. And this is probably my favorite part of this whole the whole dungeon. I don't know, it just seems like a very Hideki Kimiya moment. Like, I, I'm just imagining the, uh, the, the uh, press conference, not the press conference, but, uh, the round table where they were discussing what to do with this, and they are like, Dude, let's have the seaweed monster just, uh, do a bunch of hand signals across this bridge. A fun moment. Anyway, now that we're back here, make sure you have this pulley system activated. Otherwise, you're gonna have to backtrack all the way back over again, like I've had to for so many years. Make a crescent moon! Which causes the water to drain. And now we can easily make our way back up there. It sounds simple, but it's only because, you know, I know what to do. It's very confusing and very unclear otherwise. It just takes some figuring out. But now, comes another one of my favorite parts. There's two spiked barrels here, and he's sleeping in between them. You roll them carefully and, you know, with a little bit of perseverance and just a little bit of luck to careful not to touch them. Come on. Work with me now. You can actually kill him. Kind of a pretty grotesque way of doing it, too. I can use the other one here, too. I think it just, it doesn't matter where they're positioned, it just takes a few hits, so I don't know how many, though. It's really hard to run on these, though. So it keeps going the other way, I don't want them to. Work with me, Barrel, come on! There. All that gets you is 50 praise. It was a pretty good payoff in the long run, I think it's like one of the biggest payoffs you could ever hope for. Not as big a payoff over here, though. Very good stray B57. That's nice, I guess. All 
Alright, now we're back here at the cannons. Go ahead and take the easy one first. This top one. And uh, these other two are a little bit harder to hit because you have to position them just right. You can't go all the way down, because that'll just aim right to the floor. You actually have to aim it just about perfectly and get the timing just right. Ah, shit. There, it takes care of the middle one, and that's kind of foreboding. All those skulls. And this last one here. Aim up, aim up! Gah! It, you know, it looked like that hit, didn't it? It looked like that should have hit. This thing's really inaccurate. That should be good. Oh, f for fuck's sake! You're kidding me, that didn't make it? There we go. So that gives us two chests and a key. Let's try these two chests first. Oh. We have a pearl. There's a lot of various stuff in these skulls, too. Really foreboding! Oof. Oh, come on! No! I want to do this just right. There. And we also have a sun fragment. Which gives us... Another unit of energy. Yay, yay. Alright. I'm so glad. Felt like it took a little more effort than it needed. So now we grab this key, head over to this lockjaw. And never gets easier to see every time. Ugh. Ugh. It always looks so painful. Jesus. And another cursed door on our way up here. Boom. And, oh, can you get out of my way? Hey, 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 hey. I don't know what that was about. I think that was Crimson Helm. I think that was Spider Queen and Crimson Helm that were fighting us earlier. Oh, he's still here. Oh. Later, dude. Hope you have fun in the afterlife. Well, anyway, a uh, whole bunch of chests here. Some of them are traps. There we also have another trap. These may all be traps. But no, they're not. And we also have Stray Bead 47 here, too. I guess, it's, I guess these are traps. But not quite, we also got a lack of our set as well. More importantly, we got what we came for the Fox Rods! These aren't the Fox Rods. Or does it? Yeah, 
Yeah, let's head back. The next place we need to go is actually Seon City. Platinum Seekers, run like hell! First thing to do is to make yourself a lily pad, get your surroundings first, then make a lily pad, double jump, dash, do it again. This leads to a very missable trophy, if you don't know exactly how this is supposed to be done, but for everybody else, nothing happens if you do get caught by the water dragon, but yes, the water dragon is actively pursuing you! Oh. If you hear the music, then you're good. The idea is to make it to the shore. You gotta make it to the shore. Ugh. Ooh, I'll take that climb in the meantime. She scores as a coral fragment. That's nice. And... Oh, we made it! They did. Several times. And that gets you a trophy that, again, is very, very missable. Well, that was about the scariest thing in my life of this episode, at least. But now, we need to head back to Seon City because... The game says so, and apparently this mallet says so, but I'm gonna follow wherever this mallet goes, I guess, so, uh... Yeah, we'll see you next time on Let's Play Okami HD!